Hello. This week I want to talk about self-identification on the autism spectrum, specifically the massive mess the changing diagnostic criteria has made of this and the unintended knock-on effect that mess of terminology has had on the autistic community. What we call ourselves and how we describe our condition, basically. ASD, new terminology, versus Asperger's, old terminology. As I've discovered coming into this space since realizing I was on the spectrum, this is a really prickly subject in the autistic community. A year and a bit after my diagnosis of ASD, I'm still relatively new into this community, right? And I just want to say straight off, uh, straight off the bat, I don't have a dog in this fight. I just hate the fact there is a fight, let alone that it can get so vicious and so self-harming, uh, both for older diagnosed people and for newly diagnosed uh, people or people who suspect they might be on the autism spectrum coming into this space for the first time, simply trying to find an identity for themselves. And basically, because of this confusion in terminology, risking getting punched in the face as soon as they walk through the door by saying the wrong thing. And I really wish we as a community could find a way to stop worsening a divide and whichever way our opinion lies on terminology, accept the fact that Asperger's used to be a separate formal diagnosis to autism but isn't now. Also accept the fact that for many people their prior diagnosis of Asperger's is a key part of their self-identity and they like being referred to as Aspies and basically just live and let live with overlapping self-identification. To me, fresh in, we need to help and support each other, improve things uh, wherever we are on the spectrum, not be at each other's throats, which I've seen and, and it sucks. Look, I'm not an expert in autism. I'm just someone with quite a recent diagnosis and quite recent experience of the confusion and ambiguity around terminology. I do understand there's a lot of strong feelings on both sides of this and I'm just trying to pick my way through it. So let me use this video to explain my perspective on this as a recent entrant into this space and acknowledge two very distinct but often conflated issues about the prior diagnosis of Asperger's and why it's fallen out of use. Issue one, the fact that so-called high-functioning autism and Asperger's syndrome, uh, syndrome, neither term officially used anymore, were so similar in most aspects the decision was made to merge them under the generic umbrella term of autism spectrum disorder slash autism spectrum condition which also covers so-called classic autism to address the underlying condition rather than a person's intelligence levels and ability to, to quote-unquote cope with the condition. And issue two, separate but related, acknowledge the problem with Hans Asperger himself, why some people hate anyone still using the term Asperger syndrome, and finally acknowledge the mess and ambiguity this change in terminology appears to have caused within the autism community itself. I think generally I want to plead that we as a community can find a way through this ambiguity to just be a little kinder to each other if we're not always getting it right. Because what, what I've seen happen to newly diagnosed people in online spaces for using the, the wrong quote-unquote words to describe themselves has been pretty horrible to be honest. It's, it's turned some online spaces in what I call a circular firing squad, where everyone ends up getting hurt. And to me, we should do and be better than that. So context for this, chapter 12, week 12 of my autism and ADHD year, this was the week I got my formal ADOS2 assessment report and had it confirmed in black and white what I already suspected, a formal diagnosis of ASD autism spectrum disorder, um, plus anxiety disorder, uh, linked to the undiagnosed ASD, just thrown in for fun. You'd think getting this diagnosis would bring a certain amount of clarity and unambiguous understanding of the condition. Uh, you'd be wrong. The explanatory text 
around my formal diagnosis listed the ICD-10 references for ASD as well as for anxiety disorder. Uh, the ICD-10, by the way, is the uh, International Classification of Diseases 10th Revision used by the World Health Organization uh, around the world. Uh, sidebar, again, keep repeating, autism is not a disease, not a disorder, just a condition. But anyway, I obviously googled the references I was given and read the source manual to understand more. I then had a follow-up consultation with the clinic who explained in their words I had what used to be known as Asperger's syndrome which was itself very similar to what used to be known as high functioning autism but that everything had recently changed and was now just ASD an umbrella term for being on the autism spectrum whether you have co-occurring learning disabilities or not whether you had a delay in verbal communication as a child or not, there were no more subcategories of autism. It was all just one thing now. So I 100% understood the explanation that the terms high functioning autism and low functioning autism were outdated and old fashioned value judgments. Those terms wrongly treated the spectrum as a linear line from very autistic to not very autistic. And that creates two problems. Um, it minimises the challenges of one and minimises the abilities and self-esteem of the other. So do away with that. Makes sense. Get it. All of us have the same underlying condition. All of us are on the spectrum, whether we have high support needs or low support needs due to other factors and co-occurring conditions. Fine with that. All good. What I did ask for further clarification on and what I found really ambiguous and it was why, why she was telling me I used to have what would have been classified as Asperger's syndrome because I was literally doing the reading talking to her and there is a separate ICD-10 code for Asperger's syndrome. Why was I not being diagnosed with that code if that's what she was telling me I had? And her answer, as if it was the most obvious thing in the world, and she started rattling acronyms off of me, was that the, the DSM-5 didn't recognise Asperger's syndrome anymore. And although the ICD-10 did, the next one, the ICD-11, wouldn't. All of these acronyms, ICD-10, DSM-5, ICD-11, were just being thrown around as if I would know what on earth they were with no contextual background for someone who three months previously had no idea they may even be autistic, let alone be familiar with competing diagnostic manuals and the chronology of their, their publication updates. The first reason I think I got so stuck on this, um, autistic people often struggle with ambiguity and lack of clarity. Um, I do, and I suddenly found myself deep in what felt to me like confused messaging at the exact point I needed absolute clarity on what I was being diagnosed with. You've got Asperger's syndrome, but we're not allowed to call it that anymore. It really wasn't cutting it for me. So, yeah, that was that, but that was basically all I got. I was three months into realising I'm autistic. Um, I'm really pleased to kind of finally have a framework for myself, but I'm still kind of in a bit of a state of shock and confusion around it all at this point, right? Why can I not even be given an unambiguous definition of what I have? And when I looked at the prior criteria and descriptors for Asperger's, it matched way more specifically my lived experience than the much broader criteria that's set out for generic autism, which covers a whole plethora of, of lived experiences. And once I'd got further down the path and read more into this, I understood this terminology and classification debate. I understood it, it was an issue that's been going on for years. Uh, and when you know the history, you've got your viewpoint and you've lived through the debate. But for people like me who are entering the chat for the first time and we're still being more accurately defined by what we're not and being told it's a contentious area, do, do you know how that seems? It seems like the experts don't know what they're doing or how to define and explain what it is that's affecting me as an individual. And like, like I said, I'll reiterate, I don't have a dog in this fight. But either bring back Asperger's or stop referring to it as the most accurate profile to define someone. Because this ambiguous 
halfway house sucks for people coming into the conversation looking for clarity. Medical profession and diagnosticians, just kind of get yourself together on this, please. I think at this still early stage of my self-discovery journey here in the UK, my default page for gaining unbiased information on autism was at this point the National Autistic Society, um, who still have an individual page on Asperger's syndrome, and um, I'll link to it below. I 100% understand the reasoning for bundling all autism spectrum presentations under one umbrella, and I 100% agree that high functioning and low functioning autism are shitty value judgment labels, but I unashamedly say um, that this NAS page on Asperger's is the page that I shared with friends and family immediately after getting my ASD diagnosis, simply because it was the page I had found that described me and what I had been living with best. Other pages describing more classic autism, now bundled into pages describing generic ASD, I just didn't struggle like that, and it felt disingenuous, dis disingenuous and dishonest to claim that I did feel like that. So rightly or wrongly, it was the, the Asperger's description I initially gravitated towards. But this brings me to the second problematic aspect of, of Asperger's and why it's falling out of use. The NES page acknowledges in the first sentence on that page that, um, that I shared that new evidence about Hans Asperger's history have provoked a big debate and that many people who fit the profile for Asperger's syndrome are now being diagnosed with ASD instead. So, in short, for those coming to this without the, ba the background, Hans Asperger was an Austrian paediatrician in the 1940s whose research into what we now understand to be the autism spectrum was, was absolutely groundbreaking. It was so groundbreaking and influential that a few decades later, the British psychiatrist Lorna Wing named underlying autism without co-occurring learning disabilities Asperger's syndrome, specifically after his research. Over the next few decades, the term Asperger's syndrome slowly grew into the collective conscious of the Western world as knowledge and understanding about the condition grew and more and more people were getting diagnosed, including high-profile individuals in the media like uh, like Chris Packham, like Susan Boyle, uh, Elon Musk, Greta Thunberg, specifically declaring an Asperger's diagnosis. Asperger's became synonymous with terms like smart, quote-unquote, autism and high-functioning autism. This has its own problems uh, that I referred to earlier, as well as implying if you're not high-functioning, you're low-functioning, which is a horrible thing to label anyone. It also almost puts people with Asperger's on a pedestal as special somehow and minimise the challenges they face. The, the underlying challenges of autism, feeling different and isolated, feeling overwhelmed by the world around us, finding communication and social interaction stressful, getting locked into restricted and repetitive behaviours and activities and interests. They vary from person to person, but they're there whether you've got co-occurring learning disabilities or not. And putting Aspies on a pedestal as smart eccentric weirdos both minimises the challenges they face and creates an expectation that every one of us is a genius. The vast, vast majority of us are not. We're just normal people with a condition and a different way of processing information about the world around us, which can, which can be difficult. So there's a host of reasons the term Asperger's and dividing autistic people up into very autistic and slightly autistic is just is problematic and wrong from both ends of the scale. However, by far the main problem with the term Asperger's within the autism community itself is that we now know Hans Asperger actively assisted the Nazi party's euthanasia program. And people, quite reasonably, don't want to be associated with a Nazi, given this new information. Particularly one who seemed to place a higher intrinsic value on autistic kids of high intelligence without learning disabilities. These were his, his little professors, as he called them. Now, if this is where the story ended, that would be fine. 
we'd just stop using Asperger's and segue into ASD. We'd get used to it. We'd just refer to the autism spectrum as an umbrella condition and address the variety of different lived experiences under that umbrella by reference to the way autism mixes and blends with a range of co-occurring conditions, background, identity, and underlying personality types. That you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person, etc. But that's not the end of the story, because people have been being diagnosed specifically with Asperger's syndrome, as opposed to classic autism, for decades. For many, many, many people, it's become a fundamental part of their identity. People who feel isolated and apart from their peers their whole lives became proud Aspies and found a sense of community and acceptance around other people like them, other Aspies. Those people, often older, are now being told their sense of identity that they finally found is wrong, and they're slated for still using the term Asperger's syndrome rather than autistic or on the autism spectrum. And it's not only people who have had their diagnosis for a while now, people are still getting diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome uh, in parts of the world. It's not been a neat changeover. Or like me, being diagnosed with ASD, but with the caveat that we've got what used to be known as Asperger's and sent off to read about Asperger's, identifying with Asperger's, feeling seen for the first time in our lives as Asperger's, and consequently self-identifying as, as having Asperger's, then finding online forums and social media, innocently declaring we have autism with an Asperger's profile, and basically being told we're the devil incarnate and a Nazi sympathizer. I've, I've seen it happen. I've come not far off having it happen to me in what I thought was a safe online space. The NAS page acknowledges the debate uh, and their current web text as of May 2023 is, each person is different and it's up to each individual how they choose to identify. Some people with a diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome may choose to keep using this term while others may prefer to refer to themselves as autistic or on the autism spectrum. We are listening closely so we can continue to make sure the language we use to describe autism reflects the preferences of autistic people and their families. And I guess my plea is just for that, really. I 100% understand why people find the use of the term Asperger's since the revelation of the man's past in the Nazi euthanasia program, triggering and upsetting, but by all accounts the term Asperger's is not going to be used medically going forward. But for God's sake, people, stop essentially bullying folk who were legitimately given that diagnosis, found their identity within it, and are now being made to feel like, and doesn't this sound familiar, like outsiders and misfits who aren't getting it right and who are saying the wrong thing and should be shunned by those who get it. That's why Online autism spaces can feel like a circular firing squad sometimes. I've, I've seen it and it's horrid. Guys, just be kind to each other. Be patient. We've all got the same underlying condition. Yes, the medical profession have made a pig's ear of terminology. Yes, the community is divided over the association with a man who appears to have been pretty abhorrent, but without whose research the, wor the world's understanding of autism would be decades behind where it is. But no, that is not an excuse for intolerance, name-calling, bullying, and lack of empathy. Like, we're better than this. I, I'll repeat again, I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm not attached to the Asperger's or Aspie label the way some people are, nor am I particularly attached to ASD. I also recognise that people with autism experience autism in wildly different ways, and bundling us all into one completely unnuanced ASD box probably isn't 100% the right answer either. But while the experts work out their arse from their elbow on how to define and parse and correlate these different lived experiences, the best we can do is not turn on each other over how we self-identify. I myself actually found it beneficial, at least in, in this sense, to have extra sprinkles on top of my autism. Uh, ADHD and possibly even dyslexia too, we're going to get that looked at in the, in the coming weeks, because it allowed me to settle in on just describing myself as neurodivergent. And maybe that's the end destination, I genuinely don't know. 
most neurodivergent people do seem to have more than one pizza topping. But in the meantime, if people want to say they're autistic, let them. If people want to say they're on the autism spectrum, let them. And if people want to say they have Asperger's or they're Aspies, for goodness sake, let them and don't pile on. Most of us have felt under attack enough from the wider world. Let's not attack each other too. Um, yeah, I think that's that's what I wanted to say. I hope that all makes sense and I, I haven't upset folk with my take. Again, this is just one recently diagnosed person's perspective, but it's, it's how I see it. Uh, and I wish it was a little bit different. Um, I hope this was useful and uh, see you guys next week for more rambles. Cheers.